Okay, thank you everyone for one again, once again joining us for our uh, weekly Tuesday training during the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, this week we're going to be talking about ground ladders, a very important part of what uh, of uh, of our equipment and what we do. So again, ground ladders essential tool, right? We use them to access different levels uh, above and below grade when we're at fire scenes. Uh, and we need, we really need to train with ladders uh, to ensure that we're able to use them safely and effectively when we need to use them. So the first part of uh, understanding your ladders is understanding the parts of the ladder because you are going to have to be able to do <coughs> visual inspections of these ladders. So understanding the different parts and knowing the names for them, uh, very important and uh, could come up on a fire scene. So <coughs> unfortunately, I don't have a laser pointer here. Um, but I'll just, I don't know if you can see my mouse on the screen here, but I'll, I'll try to use that. Um, we, so on the sides, the, basically the metal structure members that you see that are running along the sides, those are called the beams. Uh, now doing more. The bottom of the ladder is known as the butt. Uh, on the bottom of these uh, of the butt here, you can see that it actually has butt spurs, and those are basically metallic plates or spikes uh, that are attached to the butt end, and they're there to prevent slippage. So I, there's a little photo over here. Uh, you can kind of see a little cutout where they have a little mark there with a, with what's called a heat sensor label. That is a label that's fixed inside of each beam, uh, and it has a color change indicator on it that, that changes color when the ladder is exposed to heat. Um, if that uh, heat sensor label ends up discoloring, that, then we need to take that ladder out of service until it can be inspected by a qualified contractor. All uh, right, so the, the hooks, uh, you, can kind of, you can see here, the hooks are a part of a roof ladder and uh, they're curved metal devices that are somewhere near the end of the roof ladder, typically near the top and uh, they secure it to the highest point of, the peak, of a peaked roof. So you'd actually take a roof ladder with those hooks open, uh, slide it onto a peaked roof, and it would attach over top of that roof and prevent that ladder from slipping. <clears throat> so the rails. Rails are uh, two lengthwise members, <clears throat> and you can see them uh, on the little cutout on the right there. They're basically two lengthwise members of truss ladder beam uh, that are separated by, uh, by a truss. Uh, and separation blocks. Uh, the rungs, those are what we're going to climb on. That's the cross members on there that provide us a foothold for climbing. Uh, they and they're going to extend from one beam to the other. <clears throat> so the top of the ladder, we call that the tip. Uh, truss blocks, they are spacers set between the rails of truss ladders. Uh, sometimes they're used to support the, uh, to support the rungs. So you can see the truss blocks again in that little cutout there. All right, when we're talking about things like a, with an extension ladder, uh, we have a couple of different sections. So we have what's called the bed section. And you can see both of these, ladder, both of these extension ladders here have a bed section. And the bed section is basically the main section. It's the widest section of the extension ladder. And it's the part that's always going to remain in contact with the ground and, uh, and or whatever supporting surface you're on. Uh, beyond that, you'll have a fly section on an extension ladder. And the fly section is the upper uh, is the upper sections, or in some ladders, there's there's multiple fly sections, uh, and that's the section that's going to raise or lower from the bed section. All right, so the foot pads, uh, and some ladders will have these. Uh, they're swivel plates that might be attached to the butt of a ladder. Yeah. All right, uh, ladder pawls. Uh, basically, so the, the pawls are the part on the ladder, and they should have them here. Oh, there it is. So there's a little uh, with, the, with the yellow uh, cutout right here. Uh, also known as ladder dogs, ladder locks. These are devices that are attached inside the beams on, a, on the fly section of the ladder. And what they do is they hold the fly section in place once it's extended. So these, when you, when you extend the fly ladder, uh, the, the extension ladder, the fly will go up and these ladder paws will then engage and come out like a little hook and grab onto one of the rungs and prevent the, the, the fly section from coming back down. All right, tie rods. 
so you can see the tie rods are, where are they on this ladder actually? There they are. So we have tie rods on the wooden ladder on the top left. Uh, these are metal rods that might be located beneath the rungs extending from one beam to the other of a wooden ladder. Uh, we don't have a lot of wooden ladders in the CSRD, so this isn't something we're going to come into play with. Uh, the halyard, uh, also known as the fly rope. So the halyard, it's basically just the rope or cable, and you can see it here. They call it the halyard cable in the picture. Um, it's, it's a rope or cable used for hoisting or lowering the fly sections of the ladder. So as we pull that up, the, the extension ladder will extend, the fly sections go up, the ladder poles will engage and prevent the ladder from coming back down. Uh, protection plates. Protection plates are uh, strips of metal attached at chafing points in areas that come in contact with places like uh, apparatus uh, mounting brackets. So you can see there's again a cutout here. That would be where the ladder is actually coming in direct contact with those uh, with uh, some kind of apparatus mounting bracket and we want to protect that a little bit more so we're going to put protection plates on it and then the pulley uh, another little cut out of that on the top right there and the pulley is basically just a small grooved wheel through which the the halyard is drawn uh, on an extension ladder so again mechanical advantage by using this pulley we're able to lift the ladder using less force than we would if we were actually using our own strength and we can get it much higher So <laughs> there are a couple different types of ladders that we can that we may see. Uh, the fur, uh, basically, and they all refer to the types of beams that that you're going to have. And these are some different beams, uh, beam styles that you might see out there. So again, the beams are one of the two main structural components: the beams and the rungs, right? That and these run the length of the ladder uh, or all uh, for all the ladder sections. Um, so they're the side of the ladder that are going to support the rungs and actually this is what carries the load. So we need to make sure that they're structurally stable and that they're going to support the load that we're putting on them by going up and down and in some cases taking out victims uh, and, uh, and having to do work off of them. So again, three types. First one is the trust beam if you see on the left hand side. So a trust beam is basically a, is a ladder beam constructed of a, a top and bottom rail and it's joined together by truss blocks and you can see the truss blocks there. Um, and uh, so the, these truss blocks also support the rungs. Uh, the next one uh, to the right of it is called an I-beam ladder. So an I-beam ladder is constructed of one con continuous piece of I-shaped metal or fiberglass. So if you were to look down from the tip or from the butt of the ladder, you would, and you were looking down the beams, it would look like a capital I. Um, basically it has thick sections at the top and bottom and uh, that's connected by a thinner section in between and we've seen those you know uh, i-beams that are used in construction very similar kind of makeup there but of course made with different materials uh, and then the last one on the right hand side is a solid beam solid beam is basically just a ladder beam constructed of a solid rectangular piece of material to which we're going to put the rungs so all ladders come with certain certifications and warning labels on them. We need to understand these warning labels because they're telling us some pretty important information for how to use these ladders and the safety of these ladders. So the first one I have here is the electrical warning label, again, telling you basically always look up, right? That's one of our main ha hazards when we're working with ladders is that ladders conduct electricity. Uh, if we come in contact with live power wires, uh, power lines, when we raise the ladder, we are going to get electrocuted from that. So always we have to look up. This, this uh, warning label is there just as a gentle reminder, always look up. Um, <clears throat> the next one I have in the center there is the heat sensor labels. I talked a little bit about this when I was showing the different parts because it is a vitally important part of ladders. And uh, these are absolutely required on any metal or fiberglass ladders. Um, they're placed on the inside of each beam typically below the second run rung from the tip on each section. So they're up high. Uh, that's a section that is more likely to be impinged by fire or heat uh, from, from, uh, from a fire. Uh, the sensors are typically preset to, to uh, discolor at around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 149 degrees Celsius. Um, and these ladders also have to have an expiration date. So again, it's set at that temperature because anything higher than that, and we can start to, we can certainly start to see uh, some compromising of the structural material there. And the final one that I have on the right-hand side is, uh, is a ladder positioning label. Uh, basically, all that's telling us is what the, uh, is showing us a proper climbing angle, and that proper climbing angle is 75 degrees. 
uh, but it shows you how to find that 75 degrees and you can kind of see in the bottom just underneath the ladder there where that 75 degrees is measured from. Um, <clears throat> and <clears throat> it also shows you on there, if you see on the bottom, it shows out. And that out tells us what side of the ladder must be away from the building. So we know what's, <laughs> what's the front, what's the back, which side we should be climbing on. So before we're, so anytime we're gonna raise a ladder, it's always important that we're gonna look at these labels. We're gonna make sure that the heat sensor label hasn't been triggered. We're gonna also, you know, remember about the uh, looking up for electrical hazards. And when we position our ladders, we're gonna use the, we're gonna use that, the ladder positioning label to help us with that. So different types of ladders. Uh, we use all manner of, of ladder depending on and we have some very specific ladders that are designed for very specific jobs that that uh, that make our life a heck of a lot easier out there so understanding the different ladders uh will will make your life easier when you're actually on a fire scene uh, the first one i have on the left is called a straight ladder also known as a wall ladder or a single ladder uh, basically it's just one section non-adjustable fixed length uh, the length of the beams is basically what's going to tell you what the length of the ladder is so if somebody is telling you to get you know the the 15 foot uh, straight ladder, you know that that's the length of the beams and uh, you can kind of guesstimate which one they're asking for there. Uh, these are used for quick access to windows, roofs, uh, one and two story buildings. Um, really easy to get, re really easy to throw. We don't have to monkey around with them, try to get flies up or, or engage hooks or un unfold them or anything like that. They're just there, you grab them and you, and you put them where you need them to be. Uh, typically these are going to be a truss type design and that's to maximize the strength and reduce the weight of the ladder. Uh, and the lengths could be anywhere from 6 to 32 feet. Um, more common is between 12 to 24 feet. The one on the right, that's a roof ladder. So we talked about the hooks and the hooks are, are a part only of roof ladders uh, when we were talking about the parts of a ladder. Um, so a roof ladder is basically like a single ladder but it's equipped with these uh, folding hooks that anchor the ladder over the ridge of a pitched roof. Um, the roof ladder will lie flat on the, on the roof surface and this will allow the firefighter to work on the roof without actually standing on the roof. They have, you know, they're actually standing on the ladder while they're up there. The ladder will help distribute the firefighter's weight, make it a lot more sa a lot safer while they're up there. Uh, you can also use the roof ladder how, as, as a, you know, a straight ladder depending on the situation and what you need at the time. So you can see on that picture how that how those hooks engage and how they they're used on the on the peak of the roof to hold the ladder in place. Now, if a firefighter were to climb on that that roof that roof ladder is secure, it's not going to go anywhere. You're able to work off of it. Other types of ladders we have extension ladders. Um, they have a, a bed section and one or more fly sections. Uh, and these fly sections will travel along uh, guides or brackets uh, to, uh, sometimes uh, for the full length and uh, allow you to have kind of a bit of a, a choice between what length you want to set them. Uh, the full length to which you can extend an extension ladder is, is the, it will be the indicator of the size. So if they're calling for, you know, the 30 foot, the 30 foot extension ladder, you know which one they're calling for in that situation. Again, we're talking about fully extended. So it's not gonna look 30 feet when you see it. Um, and the lengths of these typically go between 12 and, thir and 39 feet. Folding ladders in the center. So that is actually a picture of a folding ladder folded up. They're also known as attic ladders. Uh, and the reason we call them attic ladders is these are great ladders to bring into a residence. Um, they're much easier to, if you're going inside of a house uh, to take that beam inside of the house as opposed to taking a full-size straight ladder or some other kind of ladder, certainly an extension ladder, into the residence. You can maneuver around better, less likely you're going to knock over their, their priceless heirlooms. And uh, once you're inside, it actually unfolds uh, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a narrow ladder that you can use. Uh, it has hinged rungs on it that allow the ladder to be folded. Uh, when it's folded, it goes into narrow places uh, and length. Typically, you're looking a lot shorter on these. You're looking at 8 to 16 feet. Uh, they'll have foot pads on the bottom because, again, it's used inside. So we're not looking at, but spurs would not be a good choice for this type of ladder uh, to dig into. the. It wouldn't have the same purchase on interior flooring. Uh, so with the, with the foot pads, they typically have a rubber sole on the bottom that will, again, help prevent the slipping. 
So one thing with folding ladders to keep in mind though, we do wanna be wearing gloves when we're working with them because there is a chance we're gonna pinch our fingers uh, that either opening or closing them. So always wear your gloves when you're working with folding ladders. So the last one I have here is, is uh, a combination ladder. Uh, it's designed to be basically a self-supporting step ladder, uh, like an A-frame. Uh, and it can also be used as an extension ladder. Uh, lengths uh, could be, again, shorter. They're usually eight to 14 feet. Uh, and it has to be equipped with some kind of positive locking device to hold the ladder in the open position. So it should just lock as soon as you get it into position. Uh, never use these kind of ladders unless, you free, unless you're sure that it is locked in position. So I mentioned one of the things we are going to be responsible for is, is taking care and maintenance of our ladders. So part of that is doing ladder inspections. Um, basically in FPA 1932, uh, it requires that inspection has to happen after each use, every time we use it, and monthly. So during your duty crew checks, we need, we should be checking these ladders and making sure that they're, they're in operable shape, make sure there's no new damage that we weren't aware of. So, a few things that uh, we need to be inspecting for when we're looking at it, all right? So we're gonna look at all elements of the ladder, right? We're gonna be looking for things like heat exposure, right? So we're looking at those heat sensor labels. Um, did they discolor, did they change? Uh, on ladders without those kind of heat sensor labels, we have soot deposits or some kind of, if it's a wooden ladder, they may have uh, blistering happening uh, with some of the finish. Uh, with some of the finish. On fiberglass ladders, you might see discoloring as well that could indicate heat is exposure. We're going to want to as well take a look at the uh, at the rungs. So we're looking at the rungs. We're looking for damage, wear, tightness, anything there. Uh, look at the bolts and rivets. We're going to look and make sure all the bolts are in, uh, and rivets are tight and none of the rivets have popped. Um, we're going to look at all the welded areas, any cracks, any apparent defects that we see. On the beams and rungs, we're looking for cracks, splintering, breaks, gouges, any deformations, any kind of indication of, of, uh, of mechanical damage uh, or, or some other kind of damage. So points of, uh, we're, we're also gonna check very closely where it makes contact with the apparatus. So the areas where the ladder mounts might come into contact with it, we're gonna look for worn areas. Um, and and uh, if we see those worn areas, we're going to take it out of service and make sure it gets inspected again uh, and uh, by a qualified contractor. Uh, on roof ladders, we have a couple other things. You know, the other thing we have to inspect, we're going to have to take a look at the hook assembly. We want to make sure it's going to operate relatively easily. Uh, it shouldn't have any rust on it. The hooks shouldn't be deformed in any way. Uh, and all the parts are going to be firmly attached. No signs of looseness on it at all. On extension ladders, we have a few other things. So on extension ladders, we need to check the pawl assembly, right? That makes sure that that pawl is still working, that it can hook. Um, the halyard, we're gonna make sure, we're gonna take a look at that for damage, any kind of wear on the, on the, on the halyard cable itself. Um, is the halyard cable taut when it's in the bedded position? We wanna make sure that it is tight and that it's not loose. When it's loose, it can get around and actually causes more friction and more wear on that cable. So we wanna make sure it's nice and tight. Uh, and do the pulleys turn freely? If any discrepancies are found while we're doing these ladder inspections, we are going to remove that ladder from service until it's, uh, until it's tested and repaired. So ladder cleaning, uh, this is more than a matter of appearance. This isn't just about how it looks, right? Dirt or debris that, that goes onto ladders can collect, it hardens, and the ladder sections, all of a sudden, they, they, they can't function. They're not gonna move the same way that they, they did before. Uh, so this is actually a, part, a very important part of safety, is cleaning our ladders. So ladders need to be cleaned after every use. Uh, we need to use a soft bristle brush, mild detergent, and water. All right, um, any tar, oil, greasy things like that, you can use uh, like a mild detergent, a mild soap and water, some kind of, they say environmentally safe solvents, but I'd stay away from that. Soap and water should do the trick. If it, be, if it ends up being more than that, it might be something we need to investigate a little further. Um, we want to make sure that we wipe the ladder dry when we're done as well. We don't put away ladders wet. Uh, it can, that can cause uh, damage as well. Um, while we're cleaning, take the time to look for any damage or wear, right? Report any defects that you find and take a ladder out of service if you see anything that's gonna compromise the safety of that ladder. And then at times we may end up having to lubricate in areas and, but we're gonna do that as per whatever the manufacturer's recommendations are. So with ladder maintenance, 
uh, you know, maintenance, we're just talking about keeping in a state of useful readiness. We want it to be ready to go when we need it to go, right? Uh, when we're talking, the other side of that is repair, right? Repair is when we have damage and we need to restore it to a, to a state in which it's ready to go. Uh, so we, we as firefighters need to be able and we need to be capable of doing routine maintenance, right? Uh, ladders that need repair require, require a trained technician to do that though, all right? So the general maintenance things that we can be responsible for though, uh, are things like making sure we're keeping the ground ladders free of moisture. Um, we're, we don't store the ladders uh, or have them rest anywhere where it's subjected to vehicle exhaust, engine heat. Um, we do not store where it's going to be exposed to weather or the elements, so we're not leaving our ladders outside by any means. Um, and we do not paint except for possibly the top or bottom 18 inches uh, for identification and visibility, but we do not paint on the rest of the ladder. So number one job is everybody goes home. Ladder safety is part of that and making sure that we understand that some of the different things that could happen uh, and, uh, and be aware of some of the safety concerns when, when handling ladders. Uh, th this is the most important part of what we're gonna talk about tonight. Um, operating, we, we always operate according to our SOGs, right? So when we're putting up ladders, we know where we're, we're, we're looking for places to put them up uh, and we're gonna do it properly. We're gonna put them at the windowsill in the right, in the right manner. We're gonna make sure we uh, have the proper climbing angles. Uh, if we don't have those, uh, the, if we don't have the proper climbing angle, you're looking at too steep of a pitch, which could lead to you falling backwards or too great of a pitch, which puts wear on, or which puts a lot of stress on that ladder and could end up causing it to fail uh, with our with us coming down with it. Uh, always wear full personal protective equipment when we're working with ladders. That's gloves, helmet, uh, turnout gear, all of it. Uh, also, look to tr we we try to choose the right ladder for the right task. We don't start trying to you know to to go higher than we can on a straight ladder or you know only use the one the, the first section of an extension ladder and, and keep the rest of it together. I mean, if we've got a ladder that's going to get us where we need to go without bringing out the heavy extension ladder, why would we do that? Um, these are heavy ladders. Some of the extension ladders, multiple people, you know, at least two, and most in some cases three or four are required to carry some of the bigger extension ladders that we have. Uh, so we want to make sure we're also using our leg muscles, not our back, not our arm muscles when we're lifting the ladders. Uh, we want to use, we want to make sure we have the right number of firefighters to do the, for whatever carry, whatever raise we're going to be doing. And we're going to talk about some of those different carries and raises as we go on here. And we've already spoken about this. They have a label on it that tells you about it, but we do not raise any ladder within 10 feet of electrical wires. All right. Uh, this guy on the right, nuts. Maybe the perspective's off a little bit, but there are, there's a heck of a lot of power lines there, and I'd be uh, incredibly nervous about having anybody climbing up like that. Some other safety guidelines to think about. Um, we want to make sure we're securing the tip uh, and properly against the building, and we're going to anchor the foot of the ladder when it's in use at emergency inc incidents. So, um, we're going to grasp the extension ladder beams when we're extending it and uh, and retracting it to prevent it to prevent our fingers from being pinched. So if we're at, so <clears throat> if we have our if we have our hands on the beams, it's less likely that that's going to come in and get pinched. Uh, we're going to check to make sure that we have the right, the proper angle. I talked about climbing angle. The, if we're using a roof ladder, we're going to make sure that the uh, the hooks are deployed properly. If we're using an extension ladder. Uh, we want to ensure that the hooks of the poles are seated over the rungs. And that's the picture in the middle there. You can see the pole activated. Uh, it's hooked on and it's secured. Uh, we want to check as well to make sure that the ladder is secure before we start, uh, before we start climbing, right? Uh, both butts, uh, both, both parts of the butt end, uh, both beams are going to be in contact with the ground. Roof ladder hooks are set firmly. Uh, anytime we need to move a ladder sideways, we need to use really great caution. That's when a ladder has its most likelihood of tipping over and falling down and falling on someone. So when we climb, we want to climb smoothly and rhythmically. We're not doing it jerky. We're not bouncing up and down on the ladder. We want to do it with purpose, but we want to do it smoothly. Uh, never overload a ladder. Uh, that picture on the right, there's a few people on that ladder and maybe more than I'd feel comfortable with. Um, one firefighter every 10 feet is, is, 
is a good rule to live by on that. Uh, or if you're using an extension ladder, one firefighter per section. And uh, we need to use a leg lock or a, when, we're, when we're working from a ladder. Uh, and it, we're only going to relo relocate a positioned ladder when we're ordered. Uh, in some cases, we have a ladder positioned. There may be a team on the inside of that building that, uh, that knows of that ladder and, and is considering it as a emergency egress or a way out of that building. If we move that ladder, that takes away their egress. So we never move a ladder unless we're told to do so by command. All right. Uh, <clears throat> we only use ladders for their intended purposes. We shouldn't be using them for things like, uh, you know, trying to use them as some kind of lever system to pry something up. Uh, and I've seen it done before. Uh, so only using it to climb. Uh, we want to inspect the ladders for damage and wear after every use. We've talked about that. And we want to secure the, the, the foot of unattended ladders to stationary objects using ropes. So if we're not going to be staying by the, by the ladder and we're not going to be footing the ladder with a person, we want to make sure that somehow it's secured to, to the building uh, or whatever you're climbing to uh, so, that that, so that the butt end doesn't kick out and uh, fall to the ground. It's also important that ladders be raised safely and smoothly. We, uh, that helps avoid injury as well, as well as helping prevent damage to the ladder. Uh, movements need to be smooth and controlled. More than one firefighter is required. Teamwork is important when working with ladders. It's not, this is not just a one person show. We almost always are, are moving ladders with multiple people. Um, Sean? We get better at this uh, through training. Yeah. Nicola? What about standoffs? Like like near gutters and stuff. You were talking about ladder positioning. Well, the standoffs on a, on the on the tip of the ladder, instead of leaning up against the gutter, if you had to, if you had standoffs that would sit on the on the actual the roofing material. Okay. The shingles itself. Right. Uh, so this, uh, I'm trying to think of what you're actually talking about. A standoff is a part of a, a part of the ladder. This would be something that we'd bring with the ladder to go up on top of when we get on the roof. I don't think we use them, Sean. Yeah, I don't, that's not something that I'm familiar with, unfortunately. All right. Um, but Sean, I'm going to, but I'm going to look into that. Yeah. Sean, that picture on the left there. Yes. Is the fly sometimes on the inside or the bottom of the ladder i always thought the fly was on the top section like on the second picture you see it's actually inside it's looks like that ladder's up backwards it does good eye that was, that's a really good eye I, I was using it to show how to position you know how to know that we have the proper climbing angle but i'm with yao and I, I that does look like they've got it upside down uh, either upside down or backwards or both John, one question. Yes, Doug. The guy doesn't have a face shield on either on his helmet. <laughs> that was that was a statement, but yeah, you're right. Uh, He's the, gonna the, get, the get person, one in a kisser. Yes, no. The the person there does not have the face shield down. You're right, and that is something that uh, we want to make sure we're putting our face shield down uh, when we're footing a ladder. Uh, things falling from the top is a very possible is something very possible. So visors down, uh, safety first, right? One more, Sean. All right, Darcy. On footing the ladder, we're not footing the ladder from underneath anymore, right? We're footing it from the front like it was shown in the picture. Yeah, that's right. You're jumping ahead a bit, but uh, I'll, show, I'll, I'll be talking a little bit about how we foot a ladder as well. Okay. All right. Okay, so lifting and lowering methods, all right? So to prevent, in to prevent uh, injuries, we want to use the proper lifting and lowering techniques when we're working with ladders, right? We want to use the correct number of firefighters uh, for the length of the ladder and the type of ladder that we're using. Uh, extension ladders can get very heavy. Uh, and I know from experience, I was asked to move uh, a three-stage extension ladder. Actually, it wasn't me. It was two of our oldest members in our department I saw were tasked with moving a, a three-stage extension ladder. Uh, through snow that was about, you know, thigh, thigh deep. Um, these poor guys almost died. Uh, it was, I, you know, I came in, helped them out with it. We actually brought somebody else in. These are heavy ladders. Make sure you have the right number of personnel to help. 
Uh, we're going to bend with the knees, same as all proper lifting technique. Keep your back straight, lift with your legs, not with your back or your arms. Uh, you always, and we want to lift on command of the firefighter who, ha who can see the rest of the members of the team. So the person who can see everybody else on the team, they're the one who are going to be given the commands on when to raise, when to lower, when to up, down, uh, and foot the ladder. Uh, we want to make it known immediately if uh, we're not ready to lift when lifting with a team. Uh, the lifting has to happen in unison. Uh, and we're going to reverse the procedure for, for lifting if it's necessary to place the ladder on the ground before raising. So we're going to lower the ladder using our leg muscles and we're going to keep our body perpendicular to the ladder and our feet parallel with the ladder when the ladder is paced, placed on it. So with ladder carries, uh, under, there are different ways of doing it. Uh, we need to do it safely. We need to do it quickly, uh, and they need to be carried. They need to be carried from the apparatus, typically, from a, to a point where we're actually going to use them on a fire seat. Uh, <clears throat> so, ladders have to be properly removed from the apparatus. Uh, on a pumper, one or two firefighters uh, are typically going to be able to accomplish this. Uh, so, on a on a on a Fire apparatus, ground ladders uh, carried on a pumper typically could be mounted in a variety of different areas. Uh, they could be vertically in racks on the side, uh, vertically in compartments between the hose bed on the right hand side of the body, sometimes accessed through the rear as you see on the on the photo on the right there, um, horizontally in a, comp in, in a compartment under the right side of the hose bed, so on top. Um, in a, and they could be on a mechanically operated ma uh, rack that lowers uh, the ladder from the top of the hose bed to one of the sides of the apparatus. So to help us in using ground ladders mounted on the apparatus, the firefighter has to know the length, type, location of the different ladders. How are the ladders stored? Um, are they butt forward? Are they tipped forward? Um, how are they nested together? Do you have multiple different types of ladders in the same area? Uh, Basically, what is the order of that nesting? If there is some kind of nesting, do you have a roof ladder on top or maybe is it a folding roof and then extension ladder? How you, so really understanding the layout of, uh, of your ladders on your apparatus. Uh, what's the method to secure them in place? Different, uh, we have different mounting techniques, different ways of keeping those ladders secured. Know what your department uses and know how to get that ladder off. Uh, and the, locate, the location at which mounting, the, the mounting bracket extends vertically, uh, ver vertically to mount the ladders. So where do they actually come out from and how far are they going to come? So there's a couple of procedures we should know uh, for how to take them off uh, of the apparatus. For vertically mounted la ladders, we're looking to unlatch a securing device and lift the ladder off the bracket into the correct carrying position. Uh, for ladders stored internally or in compartment, compartments, we open the door, we slide the ladder out to the proper carrying point, and when, if we need multiple firefighters, we're all there standing on, uh, on either side of, of, the, of the ladder and take our assigned positions and take the ladder out on command. So we'll talk about a few different types of carries, and these are different types of carries you're going to learn at your own departments and that, you will, that are part of the, the skills assessment component of, of this training. So the first one we'll talk to you a little bit about is just the one firefighter low shoulder carry because you know one firefighter can safely carry some single, single ladders or roof ladders. Some of our smaller ones, one firefighter is fine. Um, and in some cases, you know, one firefighter may safely be able to carry something like a 24 foot extension ladder, but I'm telling you, two firefighters is preferred. Many hands make later work, right? So to perform the one firefighter low shoulder carry, we put it on, you can see that we rest the upper beam on the shoulder of the arm between two rungs, somewhere near the midpoint of the ladder. Um, the butt of the ladder is carried forward. And uh, basically we carry, we carry the forward end a little bit lower, okay? So we have, we, he's, he, it's not a really good picture there to show that, but the, 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 the direction of travel, the ladder should be a little bit towards the ground. By doing that, you're gonna provide yourself with some better balance and an ability to see where you're going. Uh, if the ladder ends up striking somewhat, uh, someone, uh, the butt spurs are gonna hit him in the body instead of knocking him in the head. Uh, so- Can I get your hand for a sec? Bonus on that one. Yeah, go for it. Somebody had a question? Okay. Um, we now, if, if, the, if, if you're a uh, one firefighter, your low shoulder carry, and it's I a roof I take this ladder, off, and that will, would that loosen this, like, this is right now? 
sorry. Uh, we want to make sure that we don't open the hooks of the roof ladder until it's uh, until we're ready to ascend to the roof. So two firefighter low shoulder carry. Um, sometimes we could we could do this with single ladders or roof ladders as well. More commonly, we're going to use this with with shorter extension ladders, uh, 24, 28 uh, foot extension ladders. Um, this will give the firefighters really good control and ability to get around objects much easier. Uh, and it's much lighter uh, by having more people helping. Uh, the forward firefighter will place their, will, is going to put their free hand over the butt spurs in this, in this case. Uh, we are still carrying it butt forward on the low shoulder carry. Uh, and that's something you'll see quite uh, as, as we go on that, you know, when we're you doing shoulder carries, butt forward. So uh, again, yeah, hand will go over top of the butt. Unfortunately, in this uh, picture, that's not happening. Uh, three firefighter flat shoulder carry. So we're going to use this one uh, on extension ladders up to 35 feet long. Um, on, in this one, you have two firefighters, uh, one at each end, uh, and uh, two firefighters at each end. So one on each, uh, and then one in the middle, uh, right in the side. So you can see two of them are on the same side, front and back, one in the middle, and the fire and the ladder is being carried on their shoulder. In this one, you can see it's the tip that's going forward. So the three firefighter arms length carry. Uh, so these are carries that are gonna happen when the ladder starts off flat on the ground. Uh, often with the fly section up, if it's an extension ladder, uh, the firefighters will be positioned with one arm at each, uh, uh, on, uh, on their side of the ladder and uh, one person will be in the middle, very similar to the uh, shoulder carry, the flat shoulder carry you saw on the last slide. Um, so you face the butt while kneeling. Firefighters grab the beam and stand holding the ladder at arm's length. Uh, four firefighters can perform it using basically the same positions that we're going to talk about in the uh, four firefighter flat shoulder carry, which is right now. Uh, so again, this is the same as the other flat shoulder carry, the three firefighter flat shoulder carry. Uh, it's just a change in position to accommodate that fourth firefighter. We no longer have anyone in the middle. We have two at the back, uh, two at the butt, two at the tip, um, and they're opposite of each other. You can see that the direction of travel, again, is towards the butt. Two firefighters length on, uh, arms length on edge carry. So these, you know, any arms length carry, you're looking at something that's going to be more lightweight. These are not designed for uh, the heavier styles of ladders. Uh, the firefighters are positioned in the bed section, which is the widest section of the ladder um, when it's in the vertical position. So ladder selection. How do we know what ladder we're going to choose? What ladder is going to be the right one for the job? Whose job is it? Well, it's the incident commander's job or your supervisor will tell you which ladder to use in some cases, uh, your team leader, uh, and where they want that ladder placed. Uh, some of the factors that, that, that the uh, team leader or incident commander may be taking into, play, into consideration are things like the needs of the situation, what ladders are available, the assigned tasks, uh, the location of overhead obstructions. We don't want to be placing them near power lines. Uh, structural features, so what type of roof are we dealing with? What's the wall height? Uh, are there any overhangs that we need to contend with while we're climbing? Uh, wind direction and velocity may come into play and the top topography of the area. We want to find a nice flat level surface where we can place our ladders. So personnel <coughs> working on a roof of uh, upper story, uh, so anytime somebody is working on a roof, which we don't do very often, there needs to be at least two means of egress, two ways to escape that roof. All right, so you may have two different two ladders at, at uh, remote locations from each other. If one gets impinged by fire, you'll have the other one that you can use to, to get down safely. Selecting, the ladder, selecting a ladder to reach a specific point, it requires you to be able to judge distances pretty well, right? So um, the base of the ladder, when it's placed approximately a quarter of the vertical distance from the ground to the point of contact of the wall, will give you that 75 degree climbing angle. So we need to also take into account, you know, if we need to go up 30 feet. We're not grabbing a 30 foot la uh, ladder because that 30 foot ladder is gonna, is not gonna go 30 feet high. That's not the, that's not the amount you can climb it to, right? Um, when we look at residential uh, construction, typically one story is approximately 10 feet, right? 
So that's this will help us estimate when we're going in and selecting what kind of ladder we want to use. For a commercial story, uh, it averages about 12 feet. So if we're at a commercial uh, at a commercial uh, occupancy, remember that the floors are going to be a little bit better, bigger. Uh, so 10 feet residential, 12 feet commercial. So when we're trying to judge for the length, a couple of guidelines we can keep in mind here. Uh, so we extend the ladder, a minimum of three to five rungs uh, beyond the roof edge or the edge that we need, need to get to to, uh, to provide a footing and a handhold. Uh, we wanna place the tip of the ladder even with the top of the window and uh, upwind uh, or the windward side for those of you who took ventilation uh, to help us gain access to narrow, win uh, to, to narrow windows or when we're opening up a window for ventilation. We can place the tip of the ladder just under a windowsill when, uh, when we're trying to do a rescue. So again, we're just, <clears throat> so the, the, the ladder is gonna be even with the top of the window uh, for ventilation. So if we're just kind of, so if we're climbing up to smash that window, again, you want the tip just at the top of it. If we're coming, if we're climbing that ladder though, as a, for a rescue, it needs to be right at the bottom of the sill, all right? So as I mentioned before, the designated length is not the ladder's reach, right? Uh, that 70, ladder set at uh, angles of 75 degrees for climbing, the reach is less than the designated length, right? Extension ladders, uh, the ma uh, maximum extended length may be as much as six inches less than the designated length. So you may, just because it calls itself a 30 foot, it may end up actually being 29 and a half, and that is still fine. Okay, ladder placement. So again, incident command or your team leader are typically gonna be the ones to, uh, letting you know where they want ladders placed, if they want ladders placed. And again, some factors that they're gonna be taking into consideration during that placement, the needs of the situation, what are our ladders, what are our assigned tasks, uh, all the, what are the structural features, and uh, what's the wind direction and velocity. Oh, and topography. So here we see what we talked about a little bit when we're, when we're looking at ladder placement, right? So guidelines for length for the extension ladder, when we're, we extend the ladder beyond the roof edge when, uh, when we're climbing and we're trying to make access to a roof, right? So it's gonna be at least three to five rungs above that roof edge that'll allow us to climb the ladder and step right off onto the roof. Uh, the tip placement access for ventilation, again, like I said, the tip is at the top of the, uh, of the window That'll allow us to climb up to it. And when we're standing on the ladder, we'll be standing right, right beside the ladder. So when we go to take that window for ventilation by breaking the top third of the ladder, of the window, sorry, uh, we are gonna be in a good position for it because that tip is right at the top there. So when we're looking at a rescue, again, that tip placement for a rescue, we're looking right at the bottom of the, uh, of the sill. And uh, we'll show you why as well in a future slide here. So with ladder raises, can, we need to consider some things obviously for, from a safety aspect when we're looking at ladder raises and before we get into it, the number one safety aspect, once again, electricity, electricity, electricity. We need to identify those electrical hazards, right? Uh, not taking those into account can, can result in injury or death. Uh, we wanna look up, check for those overhead wires and equipment before making the final selection on where we're gonna place that ladder and what method we're going to use for raising that ladder. We're gonna look up again before we raise the ladder. So you cannot look up enough when we're raising ladders. We need to be sure that we're not putting it anywhere near power lines. So when we do finally come to raise, there's a couple of techniques we can use. Uh, the first one on the left there is called a flat raise. Is called a, a flat raise. Uh, and again, the flat raise is just raising the bed section flat and and pushing it up so that it so that it's uh, so that the tip is now where we want it on the wall on the wall of the building. You can see that they start uh, further back with the flat raise. <coughs> and uh, again, we'll talk. Uh, I've got a little bit more detail on some future slides, but we're starting a little bit further back, and you've got one firefighter there anchoring it down while the other one walks up and and raises the ladder. The other one on the right there is called a beam raise, and that again is just taking it from uh, a position on the ground and raising it uh, using basically the beam side, right? the beams first, as opposed to the flatbed first. 
So when we're doing any kind of ladder raise, we need to have teamwork. We need to, it needs to have a certain smoothness to it and a rhythm. Uh, there are there are a bunch of different ways to do it, it to do it, and your your choice is going to depend on all the factors that you're encountering at the fire scene. So some of those uh, so the different methods we use could vary on the size the type and size of ladder we're dealing with, how many personnel we have available, and again topography. So we use a beam raise typically when the ladder has to be raised parallel to the target, and we use a flat raise when the ladder can be raised perpendicular to the target. So again, beam raise is the more difficult, is the more tricky of the two. If you have your option and you can do anything you wanted to, and if it's safe to do a flat raise, you do a flat raise. A beam raise should only be used where you need to be doing a beam raise uh, because you've got obstructions around or things that are going to, that are going to come into contact with it and you're in tight quarters. So the one firefighter raise. Uh, one firefighter can uh, can can raise a ladder for some of the smaller roof ladders, right? And uh, and straight ladders, right? Um, so when we're doing that, you start with a low shoulder carry. You're gonna be, the building is what's going to be used to actually heal the ladder when you start raising the, raising it uh, using this technique uh, by butting it up of, uh, against the building, you're gonna prevent it from slipping while the ladder is being brought up into a vertical position. You're by yourself, you don't have someone else to help you, use the building as another helper. All right, the two firefighter rays. <clears throat> so using these raises, again, uh, now we don't need to use the, the building as, a, as an anchor point. Uh, you'll have a firefighter positioned at the butt as the healer, and they're responsible for placing the butt at the desired position from the building. So trying to judge where it's going to be before you, before you start raising it. Uh, and they're going to determine whether the ladder is going to be raised parallel or perpendicular to the building. So are we going to be, you know, having to raise it? Uh, can, can we raise it straight on at the building? Do we have to come along from the side? The person at the butt is also going to be the one responsible for giving the commands during the operation. They're the ones who are going to say, ready to raise, raise the ladder. All right. Uh, and there's a couple of ways for the firefighters to do the two firefighter raise. And those two ways we saw in the last slide were the flat raise and the beam raise. So larger ladders may require more personnel, right? As the length of the ladder increases, the weight increases, and that's gonna need more people to get that ladder raised. Uh, three firefighters should be used to raise ladders over 35 feet or longer. Um, it's the same position, it's, it's exactly the same procedure as that two firefighter raise, um, and firefighters are positioned along each beam. So you've got one, as you can see on each side, instead of just one going up the middle, you've got two different, two firefighters there to support the weight of that ladder. So now we've raised the ladder and the ladder uh, maybe isn't in the exact optimal position of where we wanted it to be. So we may end up having to either shift or pivot that ladder. Um, if the extension ladder is raised with the fly in the incorrect position, uh, it's necessary to pivot it, right? Uh, if the ladder, is, uh, the ladder being flat raised to a parallel to a building also requires pivoting to, a, to align with the wall. So if we're doing a flat, right, flat raise, parallel to the building. Now you've got your ladder standing, but to get it onto the wall, we are going to actually have to pivot it to get it on. So we can use the two firefighter pivot on any ladder that can be raised by two firefighters. If you need more than that, you should be using more when you need to shift and pivot the ladders. Uh, so ladders, uh, so by pivoting, you're, you are looking at something where maybe you have to turn the ladder 180 degrees to get the fly section in the proper position. Um, or that ladder was flat raised parallel to the building and we need to and we need to get it over there. So because they're hard to control, shifting ground ladders it, when they're in their vertical position, it's, it really should be limited, limited to short distances uh, such as again aligning it to make it perpendicular with the building or maybe an adjacent window we need to get it over very that's very close to where we've already got it up. Right? One firefighter can shift a small ladder 20 feet or less uh, but anytime we look at uh, anything over that, we're looking at at least two firefighters, possibly more. Uh, so when we're looking at shifting a ladder uh, a short distance, you're looking, what we want to do is we want to place the ladder up against the building. 
and slide the top sideways and then pick up the butt and move it into position. So we're actually gonna tilt it and drag it over. And again, more the heavier that ladder is, the more people are gonna be required to help do that. Okay, tying the halyard. So again, that halyard, that's the rope that's used for hoisting the fly sections of the ladder. Uh, we need to tie it off so that, uh, so that it doesn't come undone, so that, the, so that uh, the ladder can't come back down once we've extended it. So once an extension ladder is uh, resting against the structure, before we're climbing, the halyard needs to be tied. And, the, and the, the knot we use for that is a clove hitch. And we finish that off with a safety knot. So you can see the clove hitch around the rungs there, and then he's just finishing it there with the safety knot, all right? Um, th what this is going to do is it's going to prevent the fly from slipping again, and it's going to prevent tipping, uh, tripping. It's going to prevent other people from tripping over the halyard that's lying on the ground. Um, if we're looking at rescue situations, remember speed is critical. It's not always going to be necessary to, to you know, tie a perfect knot when you're when you're in those situations or wrap all the excess around. We do want to tie it off though, and we do want to make sure that we get that we have some safety there uh, before we go into our operations. So Darcy kind of brought up uh, a little bit about. Uh, uh, talking about healing the ladder and techniques for healing the ladder. And so I've got some slides, some pictures here that show two different techniques that many of us have been taught over the years uh, on how we can heal a ladder. Uh, so when we're healing the ladder, the picture on the left, you see the firefighter on the outside, this is the technique we're going to be using, all right? The technique on the right, we are not going to be using, all right? And I'll talk a little bit about both techniques, but and explain why this decision was made as well. And this is changing everywhere, not just within the CSRD. This is actually kind of a new way of thinking as far as healing ladders, uh, because most of us who've come up through, you know, for for a long time, have learned to heal a ladder standing underneath. Them. All right. So when we heal a ladder, though, let's just talk about the right technique. We stand on the outside of the ladder, right? We chalk the butt with one end of our foot. Our toes are placed against the butt spurs. Uh, or the foot of the ladder at the bottom, uh, somewhere near the bottom rung, all right? We grasp the beams and we press the ladder against the building, right? We always, uh, and we're always paying attention, staying alert for any firefighters that might be coming down. Uh, when we're doing any of these kind of operations, again, we talked about this with ladders, we're in full PPE with our face shield uh, down. Uh, again, and uh, that was a good catch there, Doug. Um, we're gonna grasp the beams, not the rungs. All right, so do not hold on to the rungs. You can see he's holding there the beams. And we need to be alert for falling debris. And this is the primary reason why we're not doing the, uh, the old method on the right-hand side here. Uh, again, I'll show you that picture <coughs> where the firefighter is underneath the ladder and using their weight to heal the ladder, right? In the past, we used to use that, uh, where the firefighter would stand underneath, pulling back on the beams not advised and the reason why is somebody climbing up is with a tool uh with, with you know an axe something in their hand they could drop it very easily and this is coming down right on top of the firefighter below um it's also human nature we want to look up right we're gonna look up so even if you've got a helmet on and people are like oh you got your helmet on you got your face shield. you know what people are gonna have the general tendency they want to know what's going on they want to see how far are you from the top they're gonna look up Maybe it's the wrong time, right? As that halligan bar is coming down at them. So we don't, again, we don't use this technique anymore and it's out of a safe, uh, concern for safety. When you come to our, our training at the training center for exterior operations, we're gonna make sure you're using the right technique for healing that ladder. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the technique for deploying a roof ladder. Uh, you know, talked about it a little bit and how great these ladders are. And now we're going to just talk about how we actually deploy this roof ladder. Um, so th there's a series of photos that I have here. They're really good. They kind of give you a good indication of how this works. So the ladder is carried up at some other ladder to get to the roof, right? So you've got the firefighter there holding the ladder. You can see they've got it near the top. There's another firefighter who was coming up from the bottom. But on, on roof ladders, really, one firefighter should be able to, to manage this. And we're talking about you know, two, three rungs down is where you're gonna wanna put your shoulder in if you're by yourself uh, or in, if you're with other people too. So 
you're up the extension ladder, um, put it on your shoulder, coming up, when you get up to the top, you're gonna to remove it from your shoulder. Um, but first, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is put a leg lock on or, uh, or uh, make sure you're connected to that, uh, that ladder. Then you remove your ladder from your shoulder. You're gonna slide the beam with the hooks out. So you're gonna make sure you're gonna deploy the hooks. You're then gonna slide it on its beam. So right on its side uh, with the hooks out up to the peak. When the hooks get to the peak, you're gonna turn the ladder onto both, uh, onto both beams and hook the peak, all right? You're gonna lie it flat and get those hooks to engage. You're then gonna pull down on it and make sure that those hooks have engaged. So climbing a ladder, I know we've used ladders around, but you know, we do need to talk about this in terms of safety, of the safety aspects of it, right? We need to make sure we're, do, we're climbing smoothly, rhythmically, we're not bouncing while we're on there, right? Uh, the least amount of bounce and sway. Um, so the, uh, your balance is gonna come naturally if your ladder is positioned the proper way. Okay. You don't feel comfortable while you're raising that ladder or while you're climbing that ladder. It probably has something to do with the positioning of that ladder. And you can tell very quickly whether or not it's a good position. You should come back down and, and reposition if it doesn't feel right. So the climb starts after the climbing angle is checked. We need to make sure we're checking first to that the angle is proper. The ladder is secured, usually by someone else. Uh, we're gonna have our eyes focused forwards. We're gonna maybe take the occasional glance at where we're going to. Um, and so we're gonna keep our arms, in, our arms straight, uh, meaning horizontal <laughs> while we climb, uh, and that's straight up, right? So that keeps our body away and, and straight out. That's gonna keep our body away from the ladder and it prevents free knee movement while we're climbing as well. Um, we're going to climb putting our hands on the rungs, right? Grasp, we're going to grab onto them with our palms down, thumbs under the rungs, and we're going to, and we're just going to grasp alternating rungs as we're climbing, right? We want to make sure we're doing it with coordinated foot movement, right? Right hand, left foot in contact with the ladder as you, and then left hand, right foot, right? So we want to just constantly going up, but, uh, but doing it in a coordinated manner. Um, and we're going to put our feet somewhere close to the beams, okay? The halyard's typically tied in the center, so if we're climbing with our feet straight up the center, we're going to come in contact with the poles, the halyards, things like that. We're going to be, we're, we want our feet a little bit apart as we're going up. It also puts us in a good position if we were to slip, uh, our arms and hands are still in a position to stop our fall, right? So we, Talked about climbing using leg muscles. We're not trying to pull ourselves up and, and we're not doing pull-ups here. So climb using your legs, not your arms. Your arms and hands uh, should not reach above your head while you're climbing. Um, that'll start bringing your yourself way too close in and your body comes to, and if your body's in too close to the ladder, again, you're not gonna be as efficient at moving up and down. So practice climbing slowly, right? When we, when we get together again, when we start practicing, don't, this isn't a race. This isn't about who gets to the top of the ladder first. Um, I've seen some really great videos, um, I think some out of China that are amazing at how fast they can actually climb these ladders. I think France has a good team as well. This isn't about a competition. This is about doing it safely. So your speed is actually going to develop with repetition. As you master the technique, you're going to get faster. It's going to become more fluid, right? Too much speed, that's going to result in a lack of body control. Your, your coordination is going to go down. Quick movements also cause the ladder to bounce and sway. And, uh, and that's a dangerous uh, situation for it. extra load on that ladder. Sometimes we may be required to carry equipment up and down the ladder during emergency operations. Um, when we have something in our hands, that's gonna naturally uh, disrupt our, our climbing motion. Um, it's added weight and, uh, and it's just something that now we have one less hand to do what we were doing, right? Uh, when we are using tools and when we're climbing using tools, we're going to want to climb using the beams, right? Instead of using our hands on the rungs like we would normally use, we're actually going to put our hands on the beams when climbing with the tool. Um, that'll help us kind of hold the, hold the tool while, you know, and push up against the beam while we're ascending the ladder, right? Uh, if the tool is carried in one hand, you may, it may be desirable to slide the free hand under the beam. Uh, kind of make sure you're in constant contact with it. You're just kind of pulling, you're 
one hand that's free, you're pulling out, you're going up like that as you go. Whenever possible, use utility, you can, you can use rope and things like that, the hoist tool, so you don't have to climb with a tool in your hand rather than carrying it up the ladder, right? And working from a ladder, something we have to do quite often, right? Um, and we sometimes we have to work using both of our hands while we're on top of on a ladder. Uh, the way we do that is we want to use a leg lock. This is an excellent technique. We basically uh, where where you can see that on the pictures here, they've got their their leg through one of the uh, through one of the, or hooked around one of the rungs uh, with their knee basically on the rung. Uh, or under or under the rung, uh, which if they were to be knocked unconscious at this point in time, they will not fall from that ladder. Their leg will actually support them. It's not going to feel good, but it will prevent them from having a, a catastrophic injury from the fall. So the leg lock again is a technique that we'll show you when we get when when we're able to get together and practice all together as a team again. And assisting patients down the ladder. Or no, what we do is we were there to try and say, you know, to help people. And if somebody is trapped, that's one of the, going to be one of our top priorities, getting them out of there. Uh, two different types of patients we might come into contact with are conscious and unconscious pa uh, patients. But regardless of whether we're dealing with conscious or unconscious pa uh, uh, patients, the placement of the ladder remains the same. And that was that tip just below the sill of the, of the, of the window, as you can see in the photographs here, right? <clears throat> so when we're putting by placing the tip just beneath the sill right it's easier for a conscious victim to climb onto the ladder they're coming out the window and they're and it's easier for them to kind of turn around get onto the ladder and get down it's either for uh, it's easier for a firefighter to lift an unconscious victim it's also easier to, for a firefighter to lift an unconscious victim onto the ladder Right? We need to make sure the ladder's healed. Um, any other loads or activities that were happening on that ladder, nobody else on that ladder if we're doing this. You're going to have two people very close and a, very, and a lot of weight in that one section, right? Um, so the occupant and the, is probably not used to climbing down a ladder and certainly not used to coming down a ladder in this kind of situation, right? So we also have to protect them from any slipping or falling as they're coming down. We want to climb with them and, and assist them to the ground, right? To bring victims down a ground ladder, at least four firefighters are going to be needed. And that's going to be two, uh, you know, and, and that's unless they're able to get themselves out. But we're talking about somebody who's unconscious. You're looking at two inside the building to help get that person out. Um, and, and then one, possibly two, so we may need five, but uh, one, at least one on the ladder and then one person healing the ladder. So a lot of personnel required to take an unconscious person down a ladder and a lot of work to take an unconscious patient down the ladder as well. So the method chosen that, that, that we're going to be using is, uh, is just going to be de determined whether the person is conscious or unconscious. So it's a little bit of a different technique, although the placement is the same, the technique does change a little bit, right? For a conscious victim, they're much easier to lower, right? So we're going to have them lowering feet first facing the building. So they're able to actually help climb while they're going, right? Uh, for the unconscious victim, they're going to be held on the ladder in the similar way as the conscious victim, but the in this case, you're going to have the victim's body resting against the rescuer's knee. So the firefighter's knee is actually going to be supporting the unconscious patient as they come down, right? The patient's feet have to be placed on the outside of the rails. Uh, as you can imagine, coming down, those the, the feet are dragging very likely that as you're coming down the ladder that they could get hooked in the rungs and cause them you to fall or or give them an injury uh, the rescuer then is going to grasp the rungs to provide a secure hold um, and they're going to protect protect the victim's head as you're coming down instead of having that head bouncing off the rungs as you come down be aware that that's going to happen so try to protect that head okay so it's a bit of an alternate uh, alternative lowering position is to is to have the victim turn to face the rescuer, right? This reduces the chance of the victim's limbs catching between the rungs by doing it this way. Uh, the unconscious victim facing the rescuer is supported by the crotch, um, by one of the firefighter's arms, and at the chest by the other arm. Uh, the rescuer may need help from another firefighter. People are very heavy. Dead weight is very heavy. Climbing, like coming down that ladder with an unconscious patient for one firefighter is going to be a lot of work. 
So the victim size is also going to be a factor in how we lower, right? Larger victims require more personnel, uh, might require more equipment, more ladder. We might need another ladder beside so that we can have a rescue, at least some firefighters right beside the, the ladder helping to assist as they come down, right? Uh, so yeah, we're looking at maybe two fire, two ground ladders placed side by side. One rescuer might be supporting the victim's waist and legs, while the second rescuer on the other ladder uh, helps support the, the head and the upper torso. Um, when we're looking at small children, much easier. Children can be cradled just across the rescuer's arms and body. Brings our ground ladders uh, discussion to a conclusion. Um, Ground ladders are super important to what we do, right? Uh, they're used to access levels above and, be, and below. We, we often go to multi-story uh, structures, whether it's a couple stories as a residential. Uh, we also use them at times to get into places lower and below ground that we weren't able to access, right? Knowing the types of the ground ladders uh, that our departments use, uh, the, the, the parts of the ground uh, of the ladder, uh, the construction materials, how to care and maintain them, that's our job. We need to take care of our equipment and it'll take care of us. Uh, we need to be able to choose the right type of ladder, carry it properly, and place it effectively uh, to get access and perform the tasks that we've been brought to the scene to do. Uh, and we need to know the, the correct methods for safely climbing, working from ladders, and assisting victims down ground ladders. Ladders are our friends. We train with them. We'll get better with them. And, uh, and the more proficient we are with it, the, the more equipped we are to do our job. So thank you all very much for being here today. I'm going to stop the recording and we can start taking some questions.